Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, we'll be talking about inheritance. That's a part three. I hope so you have seen my part one and part two in which I have explained about inheritance, its need and how to do and different types of inheritance. In the part three of our session, we'll be more concentrating of how constructors and destructors are being called in inheritance. How What is the need of default constructor in inheritance? These are the three major sections in inheritance. We'll be doing. We'll be seeing in this session. Okay. First and foremost, is constructors calling is so important in inheritance? Yes, it is very much important. You should know that every statement or you have read the book. It says that constructor. Whenever constructor is called in inheritance, it's called from parent to child, and whenever a destructor is being called from in an inheritance, it's called in child to parent. What is this concept and what is all it, it's want to say about? So, if in case let's understand with an example. Suppose we have a class A. And it is inheriting class B. It is being inherited by class B, suppose. Then what happens if I write object and I pass one argument of it, of an object? Then auto I hope so we have necessary constructors in the class. Then what happens is that not directly the B's constructor is being called and executed. No, B's constructor will be called, but the B's constructor before execution it will call the A's constructor. If suppose A is having a default constructor, it will be executed. Point number one. If it is not the case, then the second scenario it should have is that the B should call appropriate constructor of A. Okay. If that is also not the case, then the system A should not have any constructor. These are the three major possibilities possible. I repeat it. If I create an object of B, then either the A the B constructor will automatically try to call. First possibility is that the B's constructor, if possible, that is when possible, if A, if B is not calling any constructor explicitly, then B's constructor will automatically try to call A's default constructor, the user defined default constructor. That is point number one. Assume that A is not having any user defined default constructor, then the option two comes into picture. That is, then B's responsibility is to call appropriate constructor of A with arguments or whatever it is. If that is also not the case, then the third possibility is only exist is that A should not have any constructor. If A is not having any constructor, then it will call the default system constructor. If it if it didn't follow these three rules, that means it is having some constructor with some arguments and B is not explicitly calling it to that particular constructor, the system will generate an error because first A's constructor will should be called and then the B's constructor will, should be called. The destructor is reverse case. First the D's, B's destructor will be called and then the A's destructor will be called. You should remember this. Let's see with an example. I hope so you have understood what I want to say. So first and foremost, assume that we have two classes. We have class first, which is having a constructor. So in this scenario, what is happening? Sir, I have created a constructor. So automatically system default constructor will not be provided. Point number one. Point number two, that I don't have a default constructor. User defined default constructor is not available. Then point number three, I'm having my own constructor with one argument. Now it is the sole responsibility of the child class to call this constructor. Else the system will generate an error because I'm not having a default constructor. I've created a constructor. So all the possibilities there, you will not able to run it. Okay, so let's see it. Now second is also a class, but it is not inheriting. Not a problem. It is also not having a default constructor but it is having a user defined constructor with one argument. Now again, whoever inherits second, it is the responsibility of him also to call the second appropriate constructor. Now third is a class which inherits first and second. So third's responsibility is clear. If it is inheriting first and second, it's responsibility of third to create appropriate constructors to call appropriate constructor of first and second, else the your system will generate an error. Let's see it. So what third has done? Third has created a constructor with two arguments. So before executing, it is responsibility of third to call appropriate constructor of first and second. So it has said, I want to call colon first this with, with this value and second with this value. So here the third has done his responsibility. Okay, this is how it has to call the parents constructor. If it has not been written this line, then it will generate an error. 
okay now what is the scenario what why I have created like this way is to show you that it may be possible sir that the third class is inheriting first and second like like this who will be the first parent and who will be the second parent whoever is written first in this sequence that is public first so pub first is the first parent and second is the second parent so constructor of first is first called okay then the constructor of second is called then comes the chance of third constructor so this will be the sequence even though you have two parents whoever written in the first will be your first parent and then comes the second parent that is the general rule and for destructor also it's the same rule that is first the destructor of third will be called then the second will be called then the first will be called let's see with the code so i compile it i run it so you can see the first the constructor first is being called second is called then the third then first display is been done second class display is done result is been printed and thirds destructor seconds destructor and first destructor so here we have seen that how the constructor is being called and how the destructor is being called for the timing i just want to show you that if i didn't do this thing then it will have generated an error so i just remove this particular line of code so here what i'm doing i'm calling the third but third is not doing its responsibility let's see what happens then so when I compile it says it is not having a ma no match function provided in the first the first is not having a default constructor trying to call because you're not doing it so the system has to do the default constructor so I can't do the job so please allow me to do that so so to do this job there is two option either you remove all the constructor from the first class and second class in that case what happens system will provide its default constructor that is possibility one possibility two is like you create a default constructor in first and second then also the system will able to run it so I just change it once again the normal way so if I compile now and you can see that now it has been compiled and it has been executed so I hope so you have cleared uh, this problem the what is the importance of constructor and what is the importance of destructor for those students who is who has been quite confused and all those things and for longer run and for easier purpose I just want to tell you any time you create a class if you want you just create a default constructor first then do all the constructors and as per your requirements okay it will able to solve all number of problems which you generally get with inheritance and constructors okay so never mess with it only remember this thing only that whenever you create a class create a default constructor never forget that okay if you have still any queries you can ask me you can post comment on this all code related to this video will be available in my blog we know the best dot wordpress dot com thank you don't forget to subscribe my videos thank you and have a nice day